This is Lisa from Mobile Tech Review, and this is the Asus ZenBook Pro 16X OLED. Lots of that name, right? So this is a laptop for creatives with some gaming laptop DNA. We've seen manufacturers do this before, particularly gaming laptop manufacturers like MSI with their creator series and some others. And often they're kind of lacking. Not this one. The only thing is it's not going to come cheap, but creator laptops usually don't. We're going to look at it now. Tell me this isn't a Star Trek communicator logo on this otherwise very Zen booky, slightly swirled CNC 6000 series aluminum finish. This is a pretty durable laptop. It's not that heavy for a 16 inch powerful laptop, but they make a big deal about the fact that it's passed several mil STD 810H tests, including shock, vibration, heat, humidity, all that sort of thing. So it's, uh, you know, it's not ultra delicate or anything like that. Also, the 16-inch OLED display is covered by Gorilla Glass, which is great for durability and avoiding scratches, but it does have a good amount of glare. That 16 by 10 aspect ratio, 3.2K resolution, this 3200 by 2000 pixels, is quite nice to look at. It, we measured it at 1616 nits of peak brightness. It's a 10-bit OLED display, so it's pretty good stuff. So I I know some of you out there, you're going to hear, oh, this is an Intel Core i9 inside. 13th gen, no doubt soon, Asus will be refreshing this with 14th gen. And it has an NVIDIA RTX 4080 in it, running at 160 watts. So some of you gaming people are going to be like, last year, 2023, was the year you couldn't get an OLED gaming laptop to save your life. And you might be considering this one, and that's okay. We'll find out more about that. Uh, there were there was a configuration also with an RTX 4070. I don't know if that one is still available. Pricing starts at around $26.99 for this. So that Core i9, you might say, well, gee, a little bit on the slim side for that. Well, Asus has their lift up keyboard thing going on here. And if they're going to do that sort of thing, um, it, I'm fine with it because it does, they say, allow for 30% more cooling, which means your Core i9 13th gen CPU, not an overclock, a 45 watt and above with, you know, boost. Uh, it means it's going to stay cool without having to have that keyboard shifted forward, which is something Asus has also done where your wrist rest area is. So at least that's good. Ergonomically speaking, though, tilting your wrist back like this actually isn't the best thing for your wrist, but at least it's a very tactile, perky RGB keyboard with a bunch of program light effects so you can roll your own, much like a gaming laptop, actually. Hmm. And the RTX 4080. Now, here's the thing about that. If you're thinking about using this for demanding video editing blender work or for gaming it can actually handle it and it doesn't get super loud and it doesn't the processor doesn't get that hot and the surface temperatures aren't that bad we've got liquid metal we've got a vapor chamber in here but one thing you're going to want to do for maximum performance is set the cooling profile inside of asus's own app to high performance it you know if you're running it hard playing a game or doing any of those things it's going to run the fans pretty high anyway so acoustically noise wise it wasn't any worse but boy we got better frame rates in games by far so if you take a look at the footage running of cyberpunk running okay so we're we're doing it at native resolution 3200 by 2000 so higher than qhd that we often test that with gaming laptops and the difference goes from about 44 frames per second with ray tracing low and goes up to 60 frames plus so, I mean, that's a big boost just by setting your, your cooling profile to high performance, right? In both cases, we use the Windows setting in the per process of performance to high performance as well. So do that. It makes a wild difference. It's amazing. And it really, where, what it does do is it particularly, I noticed, lets the RTX 4080 stretch its legs and do a lot of performance. All right, so this is sounding awfully good, right? A lot of creator laptops have some fatal flaw. Either the screen isn't good enough or they're really wicked hot or loud or something like that. None of those problems here. It's a good looking piece. You know, you, you, you spend a lot of money on it and you don't mind looking at that thing. So, huh, what else? Ports, they're not that bad, actually. You have two Thunderbolt 4 ports. You only have one USB-A port on the left. So you people who still use USB-A mice, uh, will probably be okay because if you're using it right-handed, it won't get in your way. I don't know. I'm left-handed, so huh, don't ask me. HDMI 2.1, a full-size SD card slot with decent speeds on it. Um, so that's pretty good. Ethernet you can do via an adapter if you need that sort of thing. So connectivity, not so bad. Upgradability, we're going to find out when we take a look inside. But one of the pluses is the RAM. You get 32 gigs of RAM with this. Nice. Uh, it's low-power DDR5X. 
And they did what Apple did with the M-series processors. They soldered it on the motherboard. So that's bad because you can't upgrade it. At least it's 32 gigs, but it does allow for way higher clock speeds than normal. SSD on this, PCIe 4, we have the higher end configuration with the 4080 GPU, so you get two terabytes on that. Uh, the lower end configuration is a one terabyte. That's M.2280, so we'll see the internals. You can upgrade that stuff. So good, Wi-Fi 6E, which is currently the latest standard until Wi-Fi 7 becomes that standard. Nobody really has a Wi-Fi 7 router at home yet or at work probably, but whatever. Looking good. Trackpad, big and large, nice. And the usual Asus trick there where you press the little button and it turns into a number pad. Yay! Okay, it's nice if you need a number pad. The other little gizmo on the keyboard deck, really, why is that there? I don't know. The Asus dial thing, so uh, it, you can change the context. It, it, so either control your volume or your display brightness. So you rotate it around to control those things. You already have multimedia keys that do the same thing. I don't know. I think it's a waste of space and something else you can accidentally bump. We have a full HD IR Windows Hello webcam on board. We have a fingerprint scanner. You know, you got like everything on this thing. So, so battery life. Well, you know, it's a very powerful laptop, yada, yada, yada. So 96 watt hour, very high capacity battery, about as high as you can go with that. 280 watt charger. So it's about like gaming laptop level brickishness. You know, don't drop it on your poodle or something like that. Uh, it does have switchable graphics. We do have a MUX switch, by the way, for those of you who want to run in dedicated GPU mode all the time. But for battery life reasons, I would put it in switchable graphics when you need to have good battery life. It's not that bad. I mean, doing light productivity work, streaming, all that sort of thing, I was getting three to four hours, which for this class of machine is actually not that bad. The unit ships with the ASUS 2.0 pen, which is a Microsoft pen protocol, otherwise known as the same thing Microsoft Surface uses pen, comes with a couple of nibs like HB, H, that's nice that they have that. 4,096 pressure levels and it tracks really well. It's absolutely fine. This is not Wacom or Cintiq or Apple Pencil level awesome for 2D artists, but for most people, I think it will do the job nicely and it's capable enough for some pretty serious digital painting and sketching. All right, to get inside, Torx T4 screws, not T5, easy enough. Um, ventilation, you can see right here, this part is actually not going through, but where the fans are is open. Anyway, the big surprise is here, once you undo those screws, it just comes right off. You don't have to wrestle with plastic clips and all that sort of thing. Very nice. The CNC aluminum back cover and here inside a little bit less than you normally would see in a mobile workstation or gaming laptop in terms of things you can do yourself. Notably the RAM as I mentioned is soldered on. Got vapor chamber cooling and liquid metal they say beside that they're using there. Dual fan cooling obviously. Your big 96 watt hour battery and again we have six driver speaker system. You can see the two I would imagine. These would be the woofers here firing downward. The Wi-Fi card is also soldered on so less upgradable than usual for this class of machine. Honestly, Asus just did a bang up job. I, I just always find things to complain about with these mobile workstations, you know, for the price, you just want the best of everything. We've got a very nice OLED display on board with quite high resolution. Is it the very best OLED display you could buy? No, but it's a nice Samsung 10 bit and it has full sRGB, Adobe RGB and all that kind of thing. The keyboard on it is tactile. Yes, it does lift up because of that cooling design, but that cooling design is effective and it means that your laptop is not going to drown out everything when you're using it for a demanding task or playing a game. I'm Lisa from Old Tech Review. Be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel for more cool tech videos and thumbs up if you like this vid.